Vion World is One is on board an Indian Navy seeking helicopter that's overflying Kochi and headed for the coast. Amidst the vast expanse of blue emerges the most stunning piece of Indian engineering. India's first indigenous aircraft carrier or IAC. Accompanied by a battle group of warships, the 40,000 tonner is being put through its paces of India's western coast. India has operated aircraft carriers for over five decades, but they were all foreign purchases. IAC brings an end to that long wait. It's a made in India and made for India war machine. This warship features up to 76% indigenous parts and components. IAC-1 will be inducted into the Indian Navy in August 2022 as INS Vikram. Welcome to the floating airfield. It is the size of two football fields. At 40,000 tons, the carrier is nearly eight times the weight of an average warship. The body of the ship, or its hull, has enough steel to erect more than three Eiffel Towers. This giant mass of steel is no ordinary feat of engineering. Beneath the deck, there's 2300 compartments of varying sizes. This 18-story tall carrier is home to 1,700 crew and nearly 30 aircrafts. It's so huge that the Navy says anyone who had spent less than three months on board could lose their way. We are inside the engine control room of the IAC or indigenous aircraft carrier. This is that particular part of the ship that controls the temperature and pressure of the engine and the entire propulsion of the ship is controlled from here and also the power generation. We are told that the ship generates enough power, the generator has enough power to power half of the city of Kochi where the ship is originally built. 24 megawatts of power might seem like a lot, but for a vessel as huge as this, the needs are endless. Air conditioning, generating portable water, lights, communications, radars, sensors, weapon systems, the list goes on and on. With so many power-hungry units on board, it calls for some power management. This is the main control center or the distribution center, we can call it in local parlance as a power substation. So all of these equipment we're looking at here are made in India and all of this sophisticated circuitry is what distributes power to the different systems and subsystems of the IAC-1. The IAC is literally an air base at sea. It's not just the two dozen deck-based fighter planes and a handful of choppers. As a leader of the carrier battle group, the IAC commands and controls all aerial assets, including those of its accompanying warships. And here's how it happens. The entire air traffic and ops of aircraft, be it the uh, fighter aircraft or be it the helicopters, all of them are handled from this room, which is called the Flyco or Fly Control. So from here, the operations of aircraft their landings, their takeoff, the frequency of doing so, and all of them, not just for the uh, IAC Vikrant, but also for its carrier battle group, will be done from this particular room. In fact, once fully operational, this room will also have a miniature model that will depict all of the data of the aircraft here so that they can control it visually and they can have an idea of how the aircraft, the multiple aircraft, at least about 30 of them on this vessel are controlled during takeoff, landing, arming, dearming and so on and so forth. IAC's flight deck is meant to be a hive of activity, just like any airport runway would be. It would have to simultaneously manage the takeoffs and landings of warplanes and choppers, that too on a moving, tilting airstrip that's barely 200 meters long. 
For this, the IAC has two takeoff runways and a single landing strip. Once fully operational, this deck, this very area will be seeing the landing of MiG-29K fighter aircraft and besides several variants of choppers that the Navy uses. And there will also be restraining blocks and several other arrestor wires that will be placed on board the ship to enable simultaneous takeoff and landing of aircraft from that very ski jump you see over there. 